Honey, I'm Mickey Gilliard. I want you to meet one of the funniest guys and one of my dearest friends. I know you're going to love this guy. Ladies and gentlemen, the one and only, Mr. Mark Sweet. Good evening and welcome to the show. Welcome to the Mickey Gilly Show. My name is Mark Sweet. <laughs> Sounds like you have a sense of humor and that's very important. Even the waiter who brought me my dinner last night had a sense of humor. It wasn't in here, but when he brought me my steak, he had his thumb on it. And I said, why is your thumb on my steak? He said, so it doesn't fall on the floor again. <laughs> I get to meet the nicest people in this business. I was recently up at Lake Tahoe and this couple stopped me after the show. And this gentleman said to me, he said, you are a model performer. And I looked up model in the dictionary and it said a small imitation of the real thing. <laughs> and his wife said, you're so warm. And I looked up warm in the dictionary and it said not so hot. <laughs> Some of the strangest things happen here in the casino. Sometimes late at night after the show, I can't go right to bed. I went through the casino last night. I'm standing at the dice table, and this funny thing happened. This tall, beautiful blonde strolled right up to the table wearing a full-length mink coat, and that's all. Nothing. She grabbed the dice, shook them, threw them on the table in a very unusual way. <laughs> With that, she scooped up all the money and walked out. The dice man turned to the pit boss. He said, did she make her point? <laughs> he says, I don't know. I thought you were watching the dice. <laughs> the toughest thing for me to do while traveling late at night, sometimes to find food in smaller towns, and the worst thing that I've seen is at McDonald's. I mean, you know those chicken McNuggets? Big nuggets, it just doesn't sound like the best part of the chicken. <laughs> There's some real unhappy chickens roaming around. <laughs> Nuggetless. <laughs> I went to a little diner right down here around the block. You've got to try this. They have a little smorgasbord. It's all you can keep down for a buck. <laughs> Now, I started doing magic when I was about eight years old, and the kids nowadays are very advanced. I did a magic show just last week for some Cub Scouts and their wives. <laughs> Would love to show you a quick bit of magic with a packet of cards. I have memorized every card in this entire deck. This gentleman sitting right down front. Sir, please name your very favorite card, if you would. Ace of what? Ace of Clubs. Now watch, the Ace of Clubs is the 49th card in the deck. If I do that, the Ace of Clubs jumps to the 22nd card in the deck. If I do that, the Ace of Clubs jumps to the 12th card. I do this, the Ace of Clubs jumps to the 2nd card. I do that, the Ace of Clubs jumps to the top and changes to the Nine of Hearts. <laughs> like to see it again. <laughs> I did this last night, the guy in the back jumps up, he goes, oh, it's a trick deck. <laughs> I love simple people. I really do. I flew into Reno about a week and a half ago, and I'm at the airport, I'm looking for my luggage. And I walk up to a man who I thought was on my plane, he's getting his things, and I said, sir, could, could you please tell me where these bags are coming from? He looked me right in the face. He said, the airplane. <laughs> now, some of you may have been to Las Vegas. You may have seen the magician Siegfried and Roy produce lions, produce tigers, make them appear, make them disappear. It's nothing. Right here, at Harrods, Reno, believe it or not, from the empty scarf, we find, yes, yes, could it be, Get your hands ready. It is a dove. Thank you very much. Fly! 
do this yourself. It's easy. I'm not kidding. All you do, you get a bird. Then you freeze it. Then you take one of those melon scoopers. It's a little sick. I know this. I happen to like the sick jokes. I can't help it. Like a guy walked into a delicatessen. He said, I want a tongue sandwich to go. The guy behind the counter says, well, how do you want it to go? And the other guy goes, ooh. <laughs> Now, my wife does not go for the dumb stuff too much. You see, I had been married seven years now, and I found out not a lot changes when you get married. I mean, both of our names are on the checks now, but mine's in pencil. <laughs> and my wife is from the South, and everything is you all this, you all that. Anybody here from the South at all? How do you say it? Help me out. Y'all. Y'all. Is that it? Y'all. Y'all. See, I'm originally from Detroit. Yeah? You're from Detroit? Yeah. Oh, big deal. No. <laughs> yeah, you'll verify this. I'm from Detroit. That's you all with something you put behind a car. <laughs> we do have a baby, a one-year-old baby. This baby did cause my wife a lot of pain. I mean, she yelled, she screamed, she spit at me. And that was during the conception. <laughs> And we went through the whole Lamaze thing. I mean, I was a nervous wreck. Right away, they wanted me to cut the umbilical cord. I was so nervous, I cut the doctor's tie instead. <laughs> then they want you to hold the baby right away. It's messy. I found out what you do. You take two Q-tips. You put one in each ear. You use them as handles. <laughs> And as soon as the baby was there, my wife goes, is this a baby? Is this a baby? And I'm thinking, is this a baby? <laughs> I mean, the baby has no hair, and has puppy eyes, blue lips, and all my friends say, oh, it looks just like you. <laughs> and then the worst thing is, after having a baby, women do not want to have sex right away. Now, I don't want to offend any of the ladies, but I've read about this. I've talked to my friends, but you know, they always use the same excuse. Not in the delivery room. <laughs> I said, why not? The lighting's fine. You're all tied down. cigarettes to all in the audience here. Now this is the non-smoking section right down front. Who smokes over here? You smoke? Would you light that up for me, sir? Light that up. The gentleman sitting in the non-smoking section right here in the front. I appreciate that. Thank you very much. Would you mind holding this for just one minute? And oh, the gentleman next to you, sir, do you have a clean white handkerchief? No? Then do this. Good. It's bothering me. I'm sorry. Are you ready? We're going to borrow your shirt, if you don't mind. I just want to test your sense of humor. <laughs> face everybody, smile, we take the shirt, we take the cigarette, face them out there. <laughs> you love this. It's a real crowd pleaser. No, we just take the shirt. We take the cigarette. Before I do this, can I just take one moment to speak to you folks about Hamway? <laughs> No. Oh. <laughs> this burns beautifully. The smoke signals tell me that we have good news and we have bad news. Look, first the good news, cigarette is gone. Now the bad news, your pants will be on fire. <laughs> in a minute and a half. But don't worry about a single thing. We're going to have you sit right here in the chair, please. Now, what we're going to do is this. I'm going to teach you one last little experiment. And what we're going to do is this.
next little bit of magic. <laughs> yourself. Just make, make fun of other people. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Enjoy the rest of the show.